This episode of the Council of the First Ones was recorded on November 20th, 2022. Welcome to another episode of the Council of the First Ones. I'm your host, Kelly. Joining me today is both Sean and David. How are you boys doing? Pretty good. <laughs> a lot of, you know, beginning the holiday season, a lot of tying up loose ends. So got to love that for adulting. <laughs> yeah, adulting. <laughs> adulting. Please don't mention adulting. <laughs> uh, we're in the safety, we're in our safe zone. So yeah, forget I just said adulting. <laughs> Power of Grace, go. Paternia, go. <laughs> uh, it's my favorite time of the year. And, uh, you know, you get you get to enjoy the Christmas music plus the, you know, eggnog, Thanksgiving dinner and mold drinks and, you know, all kinds of wonderful things. So, oh, and so people, you too. People's on the end of, that the women are where we're busy doing all the cooking and the preparing <laughs> and the wrap. Well, you just get a $30, um, you know, turkey dinner kit from Costco and you're good. Yeah. <laughs> you wish it was that easy. <laughs> it is. It is. Uh, figuring the bird, I'll be getting up about three in the morning to start cooking it because it's going to take hours. I've already made my stuffing and started the pies. Oh, man. You know, with pies, like, I can't get anything other than um, Costco uh, pumpkin pie. Like, no other pumpkin pie will do. It has to be Costco now. And it's only six bucks. It's like, oh, my God. Oh, see, I make mine from scratch. Oh, really? Wow. Man. I mean, between that and parent conferences, I'll be lucky to be awake on Thanksgiving. By the time I'm ready to serve dinner. <laughs> but we have some wonderful things to go over and a little sad news. I mean, I'm still crying over Kevin Conroy. Yeah, I was. Uh, there's a podcast called uh, We Hear Voices where they they talk to it, Will Friedle and uh, Carly, or, uh, Christy Carlson Romano. They uh, bring on a voice actors and the one for this week actually was a tribute episode to him. And I'm driving around getting dinner tonight and I'm like teary eyed listening yeah. to it. Just like that's just, you know. It's like it, I mean, it's one more step towards, you know, you're getting older when your heroes are not here anymore. Kind of a feeling, you know, well, between him and then uh, the Green Ranger passing away today. Mm-hmm. At first, it was supposed it was a hoax that was released last night, but it turned out to be true. Yeah. yeah that one, like, I, I'm not going to, I'm not trying to sign, sound callous, but I was never into the Power Rangers. But even when I, I heard that this morning, I was like, whoa, really? And then you find out he wasn't even 50 yet. That's, oh, that's he was nuts. our age. It's yeah. like. Well, we're not supposed to be doing that, passing away at our ages. No, no. Um, I mean, it, even I, I mean, uh, even I, I'm not into Power Rangers, but it still hurt me. I'm like, I've seen them at conventions and all like that. Sure. Well, the but, the thing is, both of those people embraced what they did, you know, and in the the, yes. the ways that they could, and like. Uh, Kevin Conroy for 30 years that's Batman like <laughs> there's been so many actors live action that have done it but he's Batman you know and, uh-huh. and it's like that's the voice I'll always hear when I read any Batman comics or whatever it's it's always going to be Kevin and you know the fact that uh Jason David Frank he still was going to conventions you know meeting his fans and, and you know, making them feel special, making them feel important and, you know, and just, you know, living that fandom the way he did. You know, it's like I, I respected that, too. And uh, like I said, wasn't a fan of the show, but I respected 
the way he did it. You know, he never, he never was, oh, that's beneath me or any of that stuff. Mm. Neither one of them did that. No. Yeah, they're loved by so many people. And Kevin Conroy, especially for me, yeah, that was a huge gut check. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a terrible, I mean, terrible loss. I was looking forward to hearing yeah. his Hordak. Mm -hmm. yeah. so there's a rumor saying that he might have recorded season four already. At the very end of the, the oh. last episode in season three, Hordak shows up and he only says maybe two lines. Mm, I see. But and and I remember watching it going like, I know that voice. And then I checked it out <laughs> like, oh my god, it's Batman. That's so wow. cool. <laughs> I mean, it's so appropriate that Conroy would play something that had a bat in it yeah for most right years. it's true, true. He, he had the gravatus and that was the th i was like really really excited for the next season because that is like you know i i wouldn't have thought of that but i mean man they, they had him as merman on revelation and i was like that doesn't work like I, he was no, definitely he a misstep for me, man, but he worked for Hordak. Oh, he was amazing just in those couple little lines. And it made me even more excited going, please bring this back. I really want a Kevin <laughs> Conroy Hordak now. This is so cool. And so if that's true, that I would be a that... heck of a cool way to remember him, you know, to have him playing such a, a, yeah. a pivotal role in the, the mythos for uh, Masters of the Universe. Yeah, true. <laughs> That would be amazing. But on a on a happier note, those who wanted Eternia because you didn't get it in the eighties, it did go through with over nine thousand backers. And I loved how Mattel released a little uh I guess you could say meme. Of King Grayskull being upset that he wasn't the one that drove all the fans to Eternia. That it was Mo Modi. <laughs> 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 and how oh. Modi has been embraced by the fandom so much. I mean, I love Joe Amato's different versions of Modi. Yeah. Yeah, quite a few I, customs coming out. I mean, I hope. Mattel reuses that mold because I want a Modi. I didn't want the whole Eternia because I don't have room. But he is so cute. And it fits our Motu so nicely. We don't have cr that many creatures. Yeah. And for a sci fi fantasy franchise, we need some creatures. Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. I, you know, and it reminds me of the little dragon that they added to the uh, Battlefield Warrior set with the Battle Damage Battle Cat. Yeah, I love those little dragons. I want to see more of them. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about that on the show. I think David and I both were, like, completely blown away by the fact that growing up, we never had a lot of beasts or whatever or monsters yeah. We had the puppet for the Horde Fright Zone, and what, I mean, I wouldn't even call Battle Bones like a monster or anything technically, but, you know, like, we were we were kind of, you know, you didn't get much of that kind of stuff, so the fact that they're doing it now, I love that they're doing it now, but it it's there is that part of me that's like, oh, now you're doing it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, right. When I was a kid, I wanted yeah, some of those mini sick. comic monsters and stuff. You know, I wanted I yeah. wanted that uh, that octopus that he man had to fight in the mini comic, you know, and that would have made oh, yeah. it more fun to play with and stuff. But no. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't get any of that with classics. I mean, I kid when we finally got a dragon character. Well, I mean, we did get Shadow Beast, though. And we yes. got Guy Gore or, or Jai Gore or whatever you say for his name. It's, uh, we had we had characters like that that made me go, that's cool. At least they went yeah. there finally. But, you know, even in the case, I, I agree, like what you're talking about for Modi is a whole different thing. But that was like the beginning of they, at least they like kind of stepped in that a little bit and went, well, well, let's give them a shadow beast or two or let's do this and let's do that. And, and, and you know, it's like, yeah, it, you want to flesh out Eternia? In your, you know, on your shelf, there you go. So, yep. 
But yeah, it was a pretty good turnout. You know, uh, I think that was a very respectable uh, result. And uh, I mean, yeah, it makes sense that Mattel would stick to it and say, yeah, we're, you're not going to get Keklar because them's the rules, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, they wa- they don't want to set a bad precedence when they uh, go into their next uh, campaign, right? Otherwise, yeah, people the next round funding. Yeah, otherwise people would say, oh, don't worry, you know, it's getting to that next reward's not important because they're going to include them anyway. So, yeah, I think Mattel did the right thing and, and you know, not honestly, not a ton of people really cared whether or not they got Keklar anyway. He's such a deep cut, but at the same time, it's like, you know, if you're going to include figures, that's a slippery slope. You don't want to include anybody who really belongs on the shelf at Target and these other retailers or on Amazon uh, who's going to be, uh, you know, absolutely necessary to be a, a retail figure rather than some, you know, exclu- exclusive that you can only get if you pay 600 plus dollars for this giant playset or whatever it is. But, you know, I did want to mention that at the same time, while it was a fantastic turnout, I really feel like, in a way, Mattel, in this case, was kind of shooting themselves in the foot because the whole time we were they were looking at this campaign and, and everybody was putting in their, you know, uh, their their pre-orders, you had them, you had, like, Mondo over here offering a $500 Battle Cat and then all, on top of that, the, the He-Man figure. You had the uh, the giant Shogun robots, two of them, three hundred dollars each. That and were those were both on Mattel Creations. So yeah, they were right. shooting themselves in the foot with having so much at one time. They should have spaced yeah. it out. Not to mention a lot of these figures in the Origins line that we thought would show up in 2023. Suddenly, oh, we're gonna pre-order them now. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> it was way too much at one time for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Especially at this time of the year. I mean, I know it's probably get, they're closing their books and they want a big boost to their sales. But we're, as the consumers, we're thinking holidays we have to worry about getting for our kids, our families. We can't always put the money out for ourselves. Yeah. And even if yeah, we want right. it for ourselves and we're giving major hints to our family members, they might not be able to afford it or yeah. know how right. to get it. Unless yeah. it's well, little Timmy's not even going to remember this Christmas, so she doesn't need that that toy. Nah. <laughs> you can't do it even if they're a 1-year-old. Yeah. You know, yeah. You're still going to get them something. They yeah. might not remember it, but it's the joy on their faces as oh, the yeah. adults we appreciate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I and I, I'm a sucker for my brother's kids. You know, I'm, I'll, I'll, I love getting them toys and spoiling them. I know what you mean for sure. Well, that's the nice thing about being the aunt and uncle. We get to spoil them and then send them back home with their parents and not have to face the consequences. Yeah, right. Well, it's <laughs> like I bought, I remember I bought a whole set of those beautiful superpowers figures that they came out with from McFarling Toys. I bought a set for me, but then I bought an entirely different set for one of my brother's kids and said, okay, these are going to be his Christmas gift. But they're for six-year-olds, I think, and the kids hasn't even turned three yet. So, uh, Prob- so I'm like, okay, I'll put him away. Wait mm-hmm. till he's older. <laughs> yeah, wait till he's four and then give it to them. Right, right. Because yeah. you're not going to want to wait. You want to see that look on their face as they're yeah. discovering that new thing. Mm-hmm. And hopefully it will become their lifelong passion. Oh, yeah. And I love that we're in a state where Masters of the Universe is a mainline brand and there are toys that are meant for us and there are toys that can that are for us, like the Origins figures, but can also be passed down to to our kids. Yep. And I did, you know, on that, I wanted to mention this beautiful thing that we can 
going by, and that's the uh, the new Blu-ray set that is being produced by a German company. Uh, a, a set of Blu-rays that are a higher quality than any other offering of the filmation cartoon episodes than ever before seen. Now, if we can only order the thing, it's, you know, it's, uh, like I said, a German company, and uh, it has been confirmed that we're going to get the English audio, of course, but we're also going to get English subtitles, and it's region-free. Great That's a big thing. Yeah. Because I know, I didn't realize that the DVDs had certain regions, and when I got the season two of Shira, it wasn't able to be played on mm-hmm. an American DVD. I had to reprogram it so it would be able to read it. Yeah. Well, and but the trick is ordering it because if you're in the U.S., it, they don't ship to the U.S. So you have to get you have to pay like a I think it's called like a freight forwarding service or a some kind of forwarding service to basically have it shipped to the forwarding service in Germany or somewhere else, and then sh- then they'll ship it to you. So if you have any leads on a, a forwarding service, please let me know. That or any friends that we know who are in Europe who are willing to help us, mm, please let us know. Yeah, I can think of a couple. I'll definitely be bugging a few people, yeah. <laughs> it might even be cheaper than finding a freighting service. <laughs> Right. Yeah, absolutely. Do some trades. Uh, I can get you this Origins figure without the blank bubbles in the comics if you can get me this. <laughs> right, right. But, you know, we were talking about how there's so much on, on our plates right now as collectors, right? Uh, and and that's that trend is continuing. You know, we're... Just uh, this last, what, yesterday, we started seeing photos of Mondo's Panther figure. They better be doing a Panther cub to go with the Cringer cub. <laughs> I'm sure they will. If, Mon- if Mondo just released those two, they would. I'd be buying a, them like crazy. I know <laughs> I couldn't afford Battle Cat when it was released. All I wanted was the Cringer. Yeah. My daughter's already claimed that as hers. I know. I showed her. I showed her those photos. If you didn't say that, I would have been saying, "I've got a bunch of Mythic Legion figures (laughs) you want to trade." Well, still mint in box. I I might I might be willing to work with you on that because of a little something that came up, but I'm not going to get into it until something happens further. I'll I'll leave it at that. But um, but no, like. The Panther reveal, it was pretty much what I expected, except when I saw that, uh, I, I call it the Four Horsemen uh, helmet, mm-hmm. because that's the the one they made in Classics, and now they're augmenting it in, in Mondo. And I looked at that, and I'm like, holy God, if that thing was running at me on the battlefield, I'd wet myself before I'd have a chance to do anything, because those, <laughs> those horns are like almost the figure's length with yeah. how wide they are. I was, I was just like completely blown away by that. Um, it beautiful. makes them look ferocious. It's, <laughs> it's such a beautiful sculpt. It, it is. It is. It is. And then they, they also then showed trap jaw mm-hmm. and he apparently has pistons in his arm. They're working pistons in the arm oh. of oh. the mechanical side of his arm. Wow. So you can move him. When I heard that, I'm like, you got to be freaking kidding me. <laughs> and then and then they also did reveals for Deluxe Skeletor, which is Skeletor, Battle Armor Skeletor, and Dragon Blaster Skeletor, which they did the dragon. Incredible. So the thing that I'm curious about, and, I'm, and if this is the case, I'm going to be even more blown away, is if you can take the dragon off of his shoulder and have that be like a pet walking around. Because oh, Mondo's going oh, yeah. there. You know, like <laughs> if, if they went there on top of that, holy crap, would that be worth two whatever, two sixty five or whatever it is? Oh yeah. And then they also showed uh, Beast Van that he'll be coming out probably next mm-hmm. year, Tila and Orco. So they're they're having a huge amount of heavy hitters coming at the fans next year. 
I mean, how much is all this going to cost? I mean, it, it's um, I, so amazing. But I think I he don't, might need to sell a house. Well, <laughs> the thing is, like, the the He-Man, the, not the deluxe one that was offered earlier this year, but the, the one that's out now, because you could still pre-order that on their website, he's 235 but he doesn't come with as many bells and whistles as the deluxe. He doesn't, it, it's just he man with the harness and that's it. And, and, you know, the power sword, the ax, the shield, I think he comes with the other head, the, the vintage looking head. If I remember right, I could be wrong, but um, there's that. And then also while at, at designer con, they had a anti-attorney, he man oh, that yeah. was available there. And I guess they're doing a pre-order on Tuesday, uh, for anyone who wasn't able to go, you can pre-order it through Mondo then. It so I, amazing! Oh my god, that one that one is going to be really hard for me to to like. I I really want to put in the order on that one because they took the deluxe He Man, but then they used the battle armor chest piece, but they made it translucent red. Yeah, so it almost cool. looked at like the way I, I thought of it when I saw it, his axe is the same way at the blades, mm -hmm. and the same with the uh, the power sword. And I was like, it almost looks like he took it out of the forge as they were making it, and it's like so red hot. Yeah, and it just has that vibe like he's gonna come after you, and if he slices you, you're cauterized instantly. You know, like <laughs> it, it looks it looks menacing, and he he even has. The the two deluxe he man heads, the one where he's like his teeth are grit, and then the other one where he's just got like that stoic face. Yeah. But uh yeah, like I, I really like that one and pretty much everything they're coming out with. Now I'm like I'm I'm so in on these <sighs> and I'm like, oh God, like what you guys are pulling me so far into the bad place where I don't want to be financially. <laughs> But but like I have to get the deluxe Skeletor when that hits because I got the deluxe E Man. Yeah. And I really would like Panthor. And I kept saying to myself, if I get those two and I got the Battle Cat and He Man coming, I was like, eh, we'll see. And then it's like, but then you showed me Teela and then you yeah. showed me Beast Man. I'm like, oh my God. Like <laughs> start selling your blood. Yeah, and, well, I have been doing that. <laughs> That's how I'm getting these. <laughs> well, then you start selling other yes. people's blood. I, well, I, how much kidney? does that go on the market? <laughs> yeah. Oh, for me, it's about fifty bo bucks a pop when I do it, so it's helping a little bit. But yeah, but no, I like, I mean, I I know I know there's a lot of fans that love the origins of Masterverse, and I I'm completely fine with that. But like for these, these are like. This is the version I've always wanted to have on my shelf, you know, mm -hmm. like a, like the most detailed, most to the nines version that I can think of. So if I can manage to pull these off, it's almost like I just reached the pinnacle of what I've always wanted out of the Masters of the Universe branded product in that way. Yeah. So. Uh, well, those who are ordering from Big Bad Toy Store, I know they've really said all their future, well, at least the next wave of Origins will be the international version. So there won't be any uh, stories in the comics. It will just have the bubbles. Wow. I think Mattel is sending them and Entertainment Earth or any of the online companies that sell individual figures the international uh, line mm. because shit. the wave boxes have the mixed ones and they're coming into like Target and all like that and they're perfectly fine but Target I talked with my local Target they said they will not get any of the solo cases of each of the figures Hmm. Interesting. Still have no idea why they would have an international version without the text, but whatever. Well, be, well, that goes to the logistics. Either the packaging is what they call an L4 or an L9, which means it's in either four languages or nine languages. Mm -hmm. And they probably just don't have the room to fit all that text in 
a four to five page comic. Sure. Yeah. And all the copy on the back. Yeah, is you know, of course, I, I just think they should just keep the English in there. People can translate, you know, put it on Google Translate, whatever. And I, you I don't, don't think that it's ever been a huge problem. If you, have, if you have Microsoft Lens, you can just take a picture of that page <laughs> and then just hit Translate. There you go. Hmm. I mean, either that or put the, you know, put the comics for free online with different languages and then people can just click and and view it, it in whatever language they want give a, yeah. give a code in the wave that for those who are if mattel's afraid that people who are not buying it is getting getting to see it give them a code or a qr scanner on the inside of the package this way yeah. they can access it well, I hope that the attorney of place that I just paid six hundred dollars for it has the English text inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's with an extra one hundred on top of that for oh, printing right, costs. Right. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's all it does does is add frustration to collectors who want to enjoy the comics, the story, and sure, the mini comics are a huge part of what draws me to the origins line. Finally, we're getting mini comics. I mean, that was what brought me into Motu in the beginning because you got a brand new mini comic with all the figures giving us the lore of Motu. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, like, I was what going, I was turning four right when the, the first wave came out. And as a kid, just give me the mini comic. I didn't care if I couldn't read it, I just wanted to see it. And I, I'm sure that's their mentality. Well, if you do the visuals enough, it won't matter. But it's like, no, you could actually just print the English constantly and just do it that way, just like the old days, and leave it at that. But I, I, that to me is almost like it's I, – I hate to say it, but it's almost like segregating anyone who doesn't speak English, which makes me feel a little bad for those people because then you don't even have anything to go on except the images. Well, part mm -hmm. of it is – it all started with Canada passing a law. I forget if it was in the 90s or early 2000s where everything had to be in the dual language. Oh, gotcha. That's when we lost, like, with G.I. Joe, the Joe file cards on the back of their gotcha. packaging and where we lost a lot of the development of the different toy lines because prior to that we had a lot of background on any toy brand that you picked up whether it was star wars gi joe transformers yeah you learned about the character about what we were getting and the purpose of it before even opening the package yeah mm -hmm. And nowadays, when you pick up a toy package, you have you're seeing it in multiple languages because mm -hmm. of the laws. So yeah, that's you have true. to blame politicians for ruining that part, not the toy companies. Well, they took it back then because in the '80s, the politicians loosened all the restrictions, and that's what got us the stuff that we love. And now the politicians are like, wait a minute, that wasn't so great to begin with. Now they're pulling it back <laughs> in their weird way. It's not like they're doing yep. it the same way, but it's a weird way. And then it's like, well, that's almost like making it, you know, blind or deaf, you know, like, what the heck? Why are you taking these things away and you don't get the whole experience? Yeah, they're just, you know, it's you lose so much, you know, more than than you would think when you mm -hmm. leave out the the text from the packaging and you know the the story text on the back of the packaging and the mini comics i mean yeah. sure uh. but there was also some good news also to end our council meeting today the toy hall of fame announced the 2022 inductees and guess which franchise made it in finally Finally, Mighty Max. <laughs> Mighty Max. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what the rules are offhand, 
because it could be that it has to be out for so many years before it can be nominated. Uh-huh. But Motu is being inducted into the Toy Hall of Fame finally. Yay. Nice. Congratulations. Well, it only took 40 years. <laughs> well, you know it's a perfect way to end our 40th year celebration. True. True. I, I thought it was pretty cool that they lumped together, you know, Masters of the Universe and uh, Sun Man in that announcement. And yeah. uh, also, I noticed with the images of the figures that they had on display, it was actually like a, a you know, they were vintage figures except for Sun Man. And the vintage Skeletor actually had Faker's arms, and somebody had painted the wristbands on the Faker arms. <laughs> like, where did you get these? Like, offerup.com or yeah, you know, just some wish. garage sale? Yeah. <laughs> so silly. But, I mean, it was so nice hearing that announcement. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And here's to another 40 years of, of He-Man merch and great stories. Now Holy in my 80s. Holy God. <laughs> now don't even get me started because let's see I'll be in my 90s <laughs> now if Netflix can get their act together and get us that movie we'll be on cloud nine yeah there you go which is supposed to now it's now they're saying it's supposed to film uh, next spring or something like that. Uh, this next spring. Oh. Look, that's always going to be in the thing. The biggest joke in Motu when the sequel will occur for the movie. Right. Yeah. Because we did have that post credit scene with Skeletor saying you'll be back before post credit scenes were a big thing in movies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. It's true. And we've been waiting 30 plus years for our sequel. We've heard multiple times from Mattel in a movie year, we'll get this. <laughs> so I think that's just going to be the running joke through our franchise. Yeah, the movie's coming out. Yeah, the movie's coming out. Yeah, the movie's coming out. Eventually. Yeah, we'll see where this goes, you know. How many movies are we going to see in our lifetime? Cartoons, toys. In well, hey, cartoons and toys are f- faster than getting a movie. Sure, yeah. I, I still remember, like, in 2000, when the first X-Men movie hit, I was sitting in the movie theater going, I cannot believe I'm sitting in an X-Men movie. Like, the... Uh, that was mind blowing to me enough as it is. Yeah. And then Avengers, when that one hit, I'm like, I can't believe I'm seeing an Avengers movie. And it's like the next step to me is I can't believe I'm watching a Masters of the Universe movie where they actually mean it this time. Like, right. you know, it's like I love that first movie just for the nostalgia and you know, knowing more behind the scenes made me go like, holy crap, it's amazing it even <laughs> happened. But, you know, it's like I, I want to see the transformation in live action when that finally hits instead of just him yelling, I have the power. It's like, what does that mean? Because it didn't. Yeah, it, we it, need it, the, the whole thing was a whole different thing in that movie compared to what we were used to and everything. So and Netflix better do what they're doing with Knives Out too. put it in the movie theaters for at least a week. Let us see it on the big screen. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'd love that. I mean, they can do a short-term release. They've done it with other films. They better do it with Masters because I think the fandom would go crazy. We'd give MCU a run for their money. Absolutely. And it's all digital now, so why not? Mm -hmm. I think all that you have to do in the case of this movie is just do a shot of Battle Cat And everybody's going to be like, take my money because (laughs) everybody in the original one wanted that and we didn't get it. And it's like Orko, I could give or take, but Battle Cat for me, there was that sense of that loss. Battle Cat better be in there. Yeah. And please don't 
bring up Tila and the chicken. <laughs> Healing that chicken. sounds like that sounds like the beginning of a dirty joke. <laughs> oh my. Tila with the chicken and the barbecue sauce and the oh god, no, 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 no. This is a kid's show. You know, we can't go there. No. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun to see it, you know, if they can get the movie out, it will be a lot of fun to see if they give us a lot of, you know, jokes that only hardcore He-Man fans could appreciate or you know just he-man fans you know stuff from the past all a bunch of references or are they going to oh, do it away with that with easter eggs sure. I, yeah. I i think the the one thing they should do is do a post credits where there's he-man and teal saying that on today's story we saw and then just do that <laughs> and it's like it doesn't even go to like a next movie it's just let's do the moral at the end let's do it let's really you know go there <laughs> post credit scene that's got to be the post credit scene <laughs> at least one of the post credit scenes where we're used yep. to now at least two post credit scenes exactly i mean i felt amazing. gypped with wakanda forever with only one post credit scene <laughs> yeah. oh my god i would howl my butt off if they did that for real in the movie though that would oh, just yeah. kill me but it would be so perfect and goes with our franchise it, it goes with the filmation side, I, I'd say. I, it, like for me, I I would still it was rather even see. Part of, it was even part of two thousand X too. Well, it wasn't done. Like the difference there was, it, it wasn't done quite as campy. The way, the, yeah, the, there's a, there's a campiness to the way filmation did it, where it was teaching you a lesson. The other ones were more just like, here's advice. You know, like, like I remember the the last episode, he man was talking to Orko about, he had to climb this mountain and Orko's like, Oh my God, how are you going to get up there? One step at a time. And he just starts climbing. <laughs> and he's like, just take the, you know, if you have a big job, you got to take it one thing at a time. And I was like, I like that. Cause that works for even for me in my adult life to when I'm dealing with deadlines, take it one step at a time. Fine. Yeah. That he man told me to do that, you know, but the, it, like filmation, it was definitely more. We're trying to teach you kindergartners what the deal is with this, so you don't go but into dark houses and cross the street without looking <laughs> both ways and all this. But that was part of the eighties, because if you remember, GI Joe had, and knowing is half the <laughs> battle. That but was then part of the rules with the FCC. True, but then later on we got pork jack sandwiches and then. <laughs> People doing all those crazy videos, which to this day I could watch those on a loop, and I would still sit there laughing like it's the first time I ever watched those. So, but yeah, <laughs> no, and and it, it's true. I get I get that completely, but it like that to me would be the biggest Easter egg you could possibly do in a live action movie is just right. do the moral of the story at the end of it because, oh, yeah. you know, it, it it'd almost be the equivalent of like the shawarma scene at the end of yeah. Avengers where it's just like, you're just sitting there going, are they going to do something? Nothing yeah. happens. You're just chewing, but you're like, Hey, that's still funny in a way, you know? Like, and yeah. And give us the old music too. When they do that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like make it totally campy. Yeah. Not, not the whole movie. I'm just talking about the end. Yeah. Well, yeah, that, the thing. Yeah, Netflix, yeah. we're writing it for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and honestly the the thing like I, i'm not the biggest filmation guy but i will say if they manage to somehow in the score at least allude to the original theme somehow mm -hmm. that would make me smile and it'd probably give me goosebumps even because that was one of my favorite things about the cartoon was always hearing that song oh, yeah. kicking in especially you know every time adam's about to reach for the sword you're just like oh yeah it's getting real well, and then you if know. the mcu could figure out how to incorporate the x-men 97 theme in both doctor strange and miss marvel there's no reason why netflix can't do it sure yeah, i'd be I, i'd be hopeful on that one but I will say, though, there have been people on Instagram that have been posting a lot of stuff lately, and they're using the Bear McCreary one from uh, Revelation. And every time I'm hearing that, I'm like, that's like my adult version of me loves this, though. Like, that's like the Conan equivalent of what I thought it would be when I was a kid. And then it turned into like a superhero theme when I was a kid, and I still loved it. But now I'm like, I kind of dig that there's those two options for for me as a fan because 2000 x was okay but it never really wowed me but, yeah um, bear mccreary makes me feel like i need to go find a horse 
like it's like in Thor, give me a horse, you know, <laughs> ride into battle. You're like, who are you battling? <laughs> Next door neighbor, just go. <laughs> give me my sword. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Uh, well, it's getting to that time. I do want to wish both of you a happy Thanksgiving since it is that time of the year. Yeah. Don't eat too much turkey. (laughs) Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. (laughs) And I hope all our listeners have a great holiday. And until next time, have a good journey. Yeah, good journey, everybody. Have yeah, like like you said, happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm I'm can't wait to meet up with you guys again, hopefully before Christmas. And uh, yeah, enjoy. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy. Spend some time with your family. Watch some He Man. Or play with some He-Man. Whichever you choose. Good journey, folks. Hey, you're He-Man. 